is open source in the government right now and how does it work? So open source generally is code for which the underlying human readable source code is made available for others to see, to review, and to improve upon. In the government space, that's used for public engagement, making websites available for civic hackers and entrepreneurs to improve, and also for internal collaborations to share code between agencies or between agencies and government contractors. So why would the NSA and the Pentagon want to open source anything? Isn't that a safety risk? Isn't this top secret information? It used to be that open source was uh, kind of a discussion, something that, uh, you know, there was the merits of open source versus closed source. But developers today are growing up and learning to code in a world in which open source is just how you build software. Uh, you'd be hard pressed to find a startup ver worth its venture capital funding that isn't based on open source in some way. Uh, so long as the secrets stay out of the, the, the source code, you're not, you know, committing the, the nuclear launch codes or anything like that, uh, open source is no less secure than closed source software. So what is possible if the government open sources more software that's not possible now? How do we benefit from this as taxpayers? Uh, the idea is really twofold. Uh, on the one hand, you have the government, which is the U.S. federal government being the largest single purchaser of code in the world. Uh, and that's a lot of investment you can make into the technology industry. Think about a, a space race for software, if you will. Uh, on the second side, uh, this is taxpayer-funded code. You and I as taxpayers are paying for this code. Uh, and the type of challenges that agencies face aren't unique to one particular agency. A blog post is a blog post. So open source really gives them the opportunity to solve the problem once and then solve the problem across government, which is really the problem of open source. Now, what's interesting is we're seeing a lot more presidential campaigns open sourcing uh, information. Can you give us some examples? Uh, yeah, we have uh, a a presidential campaigns on both sides of the aisle that are using uh, GitHub uh, in order to collaborate on their code. Uh, the, the Sanders campaign, for example, uh, has their iOS and Android apps and Windows apps online. So if you want to volunteer for the Sanders campaign from your living room, uh, you can do that just by logging on to GitHub and, and making some changes to improve the software uh, that they use to reach out to voters. And quickly, Ben, you're, you know, you're the GitHub government evangelist. What's your job? I mean, how have you been trying to convince or working to convince the government and different branches of the government that they should be using this technology? So my role at GitHub is just to make sure that when government agencies want to take their first or second step into the world of open source, uh, that they're successful, that they have a good experience, and that the open source community has a good experience. Uh, unlike startups, which are a little bit more nimble and can more easily join the open source community, uh, government agencies are very bureaucratic and very process driven. Uh, oftentimes, when a government agency looks to bring on open source software and open source methodologies, the technology is the easy part. It's not a matter of them being able to publish out the code, uh, but it's really using open source as a vehicle for organizational change and to rethink their internal business processes and workflows, which is where I come in to help with that process.